This is World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. China has steadily made progress on humanity's last frontier. In 2013, China became the third country to successfully make a soft landing on the moon with its Chang'e 3 rover. Six years later, in 2019, Chang'e 4's landing on the dark side of the moon is a milestone in exploring our nearest celestial neighbor up close. Last year, Chang'e 5 returned to Earth with more than 1,000 grams of lunar soil, making China the third country to ever do that. After more than a decade of lunar exploration, a new frontier, deep space exploration, is now on the national agenda. Earlier, I talked to Wu Ji, the former director general of the National Space Science Center of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He said China should push the boundaries of its deep space exploration and venture further into the unknown. He's also a science fiction writer. Let's listen to what he had to say to brief us with the latest. Congratulations on your book, uh, Lunar Hotel. Wow, that's uh, quite a popular book, not only in China, but also uh, in other parts of the world now. Yes, uh, it was uh, published uh, one year ago in, in Chinese uh, version. Uh, so I have a very good friend. Uh, he uh, uh, volunteered to translate it into uh, French, uh, L'Hotel de la Mer de Plu. Let me ask you, Mr. Wu, about some of the latest development in deep exploration. You've been arguing through China's the two sessions that it is extremely crucial. Tell me why. Yes, deep space exploration is a, is a new area for China. We have initiated a lunar exploration uh, about 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Uh, then we succeed with uh, three steps. Uh, orbiting the, the moon and the landing on the moon and the sample return from the moon. We have just uh, obtained uh, 1,700 uh, grams uh, lunar soil uh, from the moon. So this was uh, mm. very successful. And uh, for, the, for the near future, we are going to go out from the moon, go to deep space, to Mars, and even uh, further to asteroid and uh, Jupiter and Saturn and uh, to the founder of the solar system. So that will be our plan uh, in the next uh, 15 years. Several other countries are also coming in. Uh, of course, the uh, United States is the leading uh, force in deep space exploration. They have uh, launched uh, many missions to Mars, very successful missions to Mars. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, beside the uh, United States, uh, European Space Agency, Russian, uh, Japan, uh, India, and even the UAE, uh, United Arab uh, uh, Emirates, they also uh, have their uh, Mars missions. So uh, China would like to be uh, one member of this club. And this, this is a, a very uh, exciting for the, for the younger generation of China. So they are looking forward to the outer space. But some could argue, Mr. Wu, you could well put the money into deep sea exploration, uh, into other areas that would bring, in fact, a, a similar opportunities for further exploration about the world and also the byproduct, scientific byproduct that would benefit uh, both China and the world. So why uh, is China, as everybody else, so fascinated by the outer space? Um, we could well do it on the other directions. When we say deep space exploration or space science, uh, it, it's just one more dimension. Uh, it doesn't mean it will replace the deeper sea exploration. So uh, China is uh, the economic uh, quantity of China is larger now. So there, there is a possibility mm. to cover all these areas. So we should not miss deep space exploration. Uh, on the other hand, when you look at the, the universe, you will think of, think of yourself. For example, if you go to the moon, and when you're standing on the moon, you're looking back to our Earth, you will see uh, the Earth is it, so beautiful. You, you will look at yourself from another point of view, from universe, look at yourself. So the human beings are really 
uh, one uh, uh, with one shared uh, future. Uh, you don't see any boundary of mm -hmm. countries. You, you you don't really like people are fighting on the earth because earth is so beautiful, and you feel you have to protect it. So when you go out, you have different feelings. Yeah. And if you go further out outside of the solar system, you will think about uh, is there any other in intelligent life there? So if there's other intelligent life there, how could we communicate? Can we learn something from them? So all this open human beings mind and for young people, this is a trigger for them to, to think about the earth, the human beings, uh, the future, their future. So it's much wider mm -hmm. uh, uh, dimension uh, for the young people. Right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wu, uh, for example, latest uh, these studies about the quantum uh, physics has been providing all of us uh, new clues about, uh, you know, the directions of outer space exploration and how is it related to many other areas of human life. Uh, so, Mr. Wu, how do you think these uh, new discoveries in other areas that could help with the outer space exploration? It seems that the the speed has really uh, it it seems that it's really speeding up. Yes, it's true. Uh, quantum physics are developing uh, since the last century, beginning of the last century. Uh, it's really fascinating. Mm. We don't really understand much of it, uh, even now after hundred years, uh, more than hundred years. Uh, it is so uh, fascinating. Uh, it is so different from the classical physics. So uh, this must be related with the human beings, with the universe. But there are a lot of unknowns. Uh, for example, the entanglement. Mm. We have launched a satellite, it's called uh, quantum, physics, quantum uh, experiments in space scale. And it has demonstrated that mm. if you distribute to uh, entangled, uh, a pair of entangled uh, photons, uh, 1,000 kilometers away, they are still remaining entanglement. So if you operate one of them, the other mm. will react uh, uh, in, the, in the real time, uh, instantly. So this is a, cannot be understood with a physical, with a classical physics. And if this, if you use this uh, principle into the outer space, there, there will be a lot of infinite and uh, unknowns. So, but we are still at the very beginning. Mm. Mr. Wu, there's also the question about, you know, science fiction decades ago, for example, many of the things they described and now have become true. And uh, people are wondering whether the science fictions, uh, a lot of the stories within it today will eventually become the realities of tomorrow. And therefore they say, oh, maybe scientists a science fiction writer, some of them could even, uh, in a way, uh, being prophet, as they say. Uh, what do you, how do you see this kind of uh, discussion? Yes, it is true. Uh, in the science fiction, there are, there are one branch. It's called near future science fiction. So uh, uh, when, you, when you talk about mm -hmm. near future science fiction, is uh, when, the, when the writer writes it, they have an idea of uh, what uh, could be realized in the near future. 50 years, 100 years. So, uh, but uh, when the development, uh, when the science and technology develop so fast uh, as what uh, we, are, yeah. we are facing now, uh, some uh, 50 years of fiction can be true in 20 years. So uh, it can really help people to realize uh, with, with the modern technology to realize it faster. So what I am writing in, uh, in the book, uh, Lunar Hotel, uh, uh, all the technology there is almost ready. Although you don't see them right now, but uh, there's no, uh, no blockage to realize them. It's only money. It's, it's only time. So uh, those things uh, can be realized uh, faster. Uh, maybe in 20 years, we will build uh, not only Chinese, other people will build a hotel on the moon. Uh, this can be uh, even faster. Mm. So I'm predicting uh, 20 years, uh, but maybe yeah. it can be realized in 15 years. So with the fast development. So you have right. to, you don't really uh, okay. uh, 
writing uh, nothing is something it can be uh, realized. Mm. Uh, from the real future, now back to reality. Uh, uh, from, from scenarios now, pr uh, Professor Wu, now come to reality. China has been working on the innovation area, has been encouraging uh, innovation uh, from the country itself. How do you see the realities that China is facing and the necessities of doing it? We are in a period of, uh, of a new era. We, after uh, uh, this uh, uh, 13, 13th of five years plan, we are now opening a new chapter of a 14th five years plan. And China is aiming to be uh, uh, within the front row of uh, innovative country in, in 2035. So in 15 years, China will be more advanced. Uh, all this will encourage the young people, the young generation, and of, of course, including us, uh, to do uh, uh, much better. And uh, in the past uh, 20 years, we are, most of the time, we are following the advanced technology of the world. We are learning, we are following, we co even sometimes copy. But now we we feel that we have to invent something, we have to create something. So innovation is uh, much uh, important for us. If we don't innovate, if we don't uh, create uh, new frontiers, uh, we cannot move forward because we are almost there. Huh? We are almost very close to the frontiers. So we have to lead the world. China is uh, has the responsibility to lead. Mm. And now, of course, there's the issue of ka bozi, isn't it? Uh, mainly uh, that China as a result of geopolitics and many other reasons, will be not necessarily having access to some of the latest uh, uh, technologies. Uh, Mr. Wu, how do you see this reality? And what do you think are the most urgent issues that China really have to work on in order to uh, uh, overcome this difficult period of time? Uh, it is true that uh, there are some countries in the world. Uh, I, I, I should say United States is, is the leading country to block China. Uh, in, in the area I am working, space technology, space science and technology, we have been blocked by the U.S. for 20 years. They have uh, they had a, a called a war for uh, 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 law. Uh, from the Congress, they blocked China, block, block their own scientists and industry to collaborate uh, with China in space mm. uh, technology, even space science. Uh, when we go to an international conference, uh, we cannot talk with, uh, with the NASA people, with the US people, uh, space people, uh, you know, bilaterally. They have to, when we talk, they have to ask the third party mm. to come, uh, a, a European or a Japanese to come and make it uh, multilateral. If we talk uh, uh, only bilateral, mm. they are breaking their laws. But for China, we are open. There's no problem for us. We, we, talk, we can talk with them. So uh, we have been blocked by the US for more than uh, 15 years, but still we are developing. So it's not a threat. It, it's, uh, it will give us some difficulties, but uh, finally we can we can go forward, no problem. We, we will not stop there. We will not, because of this, we will not uh, stop uh, with our development. For example, the recent uh, completement of uh, navigation system, of Chinese navigation system, Beidou system, all the components on board of the satellite mm -hmm. are made in China. So we can do that uh, within, with, uh, by our, our own technology. That was my talk with uh, Mr. Wu Ji, a science fiction writer, but also a very well-known outer space expert from China. That's all we have for today. If you'd like to see more, search World Inside or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of the team. Thanks for watching and bye for now.